The episode starts with Dean waking up happily in the bunker after they defeated God in the last episode. And we see the dog from the last episode running up to Dean. We also see Sam went out for a run. Oh, look how nice this is. They defeated God, they're free now. Why does this episode exist again? <sighs> this first scene is here to show that they're kind of living a normal life, which the song Ordinary Life that's playing makes pretty clear. They went back to basics, just living day by day after they freed themselves. Team Free Will finally got what they wanted. Now they're back at just hunting, living their normal lives. If you've seen the entire 15 year journey for these characters, it's nice to see them back to basics just hunting normal monsters. So far so good. Then Dean and Sam go to a pie fest. This is actually great. We know Dean loves pie. Sam said there is no monster stuff on the wire. Makes sense they would do something like this after they achieve their freedom and beat God. Then we get to this scene. I'm thinking about Cass, you know, Jack. If they could be here. Yeah, no, I think about him too. You know what, that pain's not gonna go away. But if we don't keep living, then all that sacrifice is gonna be for nothing. Yeah, you know what Dean just said? Uh, keep that in mind, I'm not done with it yet. And I also love what Sam says to that. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> which we'll also keep in mind for later. Then we see a family, including the kids, being killed by some people with machetes while wearing really bad Halloween masks. We'll learn that Sam and Dean's father has dealt with that type of monster before. I recognize that face. Yeah, me too. All right, let's see, I think it was in 86. Dad was working a string of kidnappings along Route 77. Then Dean makes a joke about them being vampire mimes, which is very clear that this episode is trying to feel like a classic season one episode, which is a good thing to do when you're making a finale. I said earlier this episode wasn't necessary, which it isn't, but if it's just an episode existing as a way to celebrate these last 15 years, I'd say that's fair enough. So let's move on. Then Dean says that those vampires usually target kids between 5 and 10 years of age. So they go looking for a place that follows a pattern pointed out by John in his journal, and find a place where there are kids around that age in that area. Yeah, these characters are smart, and they're following the clues left by the witness description of the vampires, and using a pattern that their father studied to stay one step ahead of the vampires. Sounds like classic Sam and Dean so far. Then we see the vampires arriving somewhere, and Dean cuts off the head of one of them, while Sam stuns one of the vampires by shooting their knee and their head. We know vampires can't be killed with bullets, so that's a pretty smart plan they had. Kill one, and use the other for information. Especially when Sam, a few seconds later, reveals that the bullets were soaked in dead man's blood. Sam and Dean are very resourceful, and always have been. That's pretty smart for them to do. Then Dean asks the vampire, to give away the location of the kids they kidnapped, and they threaten to kill him slowly with a small knife if he doesn't cooperate. Again, showing how competent they are and how fearful they can be towards monsters. Me and my brother were the guys that stopped the monsters. We're the guys that scared them. So far, this episode has been pretty good, with some pretty good fan service. So, after the vampire tells them where the kids are held at, Sam and Dean drive there. Considering it's a vampire nest and Sam and Dean are the world's best hunters, with decades of experience, Sam and Dean should enter that barn with extreme caution, one going through the back entrance, one from the front, paying attention to the windows and using a flashlight to see if there are any vampires nearby. That's just common sense. So what they do is, they walk through the front door, nonchalantly, no flashlights, no plan, no nothing. I mean, this is bad, but it'll only be an issue if the plot of this episode somehow hinges on it. <laughs> fuck's sake. Okay, so what happened was that we saw two of the vampires through the windows, and the brothers passed by those windows. It sure isn't lucky that Sam and Dean didn't bother to look at those windows when they seemed to be scouting the place while walking inside. Also unlucky that the brothers decided to act out of character, considering they're super incompetent here. And to make matters worse, the brothers opened this door, turning their backs to the rest of the barn. Not like they just walked into an empty vampire nest or anything, it's fine. Imagine covering your sick so you don't get surprise attacked, that's just silly. So they get the kids out of the shed in the barn, and when Sam and Dean turn around, guess what happens? The vampires are there now. Wow, if only those two extremely skilled and experienced hunters had an acted out of character there for forced conflict. Sam tells the kids to run, which is fair enough. I'm just left wondering why the vampires didn't attack Sam and Dean and try to grab the kids that were running away, since them losing the kids is the last thing they'd want. Uh, wanna know why they did that? Because they wanted the shot of the standoff between the vampires and the brothers. I just love when the logical consistency of something is sacrificed for a cool visual. Then they start fighting. Choreography is okay. The quick cuts hide any issues with it that could be apparent, but fight choreography is not a big deal in Supernatural to be honest, so whatever. Sam manages to kill one, then he gets grabbed by the big vampire and ends up dropping the machete because of that. Dean also kills one, but after the big one knocks out Sam, he helps another vampire grab Dean and hold him down on the ground. Then a woman appears, and it's Jenny from episode 20 of season 1 of Supernatural. A character coming back because it's a finale seems fair enough to me, though she's killed less than a minute later, so that was pretty worthless. Aside 
aside from a funny joke from Dean. It's like running into somebody in high school, you know, somebody you don't want to see. Which was a good way for Dean to stall while Sam was grabbing his machete. Though I do wonder how the vampires holding Dean didn't see Sam getting up and stopped him from killing Jenny. Then one of the vampires lets go of Dean for some reason. While Dean punches a big vampire in the crotch and that stuns him. Okay, and Dean continues to win a hand-to-hand -hand fight between the big dude until the show decides he can't anymore, which is when we finally see the dreaded piece of rebar sticking out of a pillar. It'd be a very convenient way to kill someone, wouldn't it? The only place a piece of rebar is sticking out of, it has a perfect shape to stab someone in the back. It'd certainly be a shame if it happened to become relevant to the plot in any way. <laughs> Sam kills his vampire, which only leaves a big guy now. Dingo's attack the guy like a retard. The big vampire impales him with a piece of rebar sticking out. <sighs> yeah, that's just... awesome. Then, Sam cuts the big guy's head off before he's able to finish off Dean. Then, Sam says they should go after the kids, and Dean says he's not going anywhere. It sure sucks that the death scene of one of the two main characters of the show was achieved through bullshit contrivances, thus making the audience feel cheated and the death feel shallow, which is quite the fucking opposite of what you'd want in the finale of your 15-year-old series. Now, even though it was a bullshit way to get Dean to die, him asking Sam to stay with him, and the acting from Jensen and Jared are really good in this scene, so that's good at least. Also, Dean asking Sam to get the kids to somewhere safe, basically sacrificing himself so the kids stay safe, is in character for him. Save lives, you know? Because it is, it's a, it's a crap job. We do the ugly things so the people can live happy. So this isn't that bad. Yet. So Dean says, You knew it was always gonna end like this for me. It was supposed to end like this, right? Uh, what the fuck do you mean it's supposed to end like this? Dean has always been defender number one and leader of Team Free Will, but now he's supposed to die like this? Did the writers not see how this contradicts his character completely? Why stop there? Why not send him even further back and let some other poor sons of bitches save the world? But here's a problem. Who does that make us? Would we be better off? Yeah, maybe. But I gotta be honest, I don't know who that Dean Winchester is. And I'm good with who I am. I'm good with who you are. Because our lives... They're ours. Even more so when this episode is immediately following the episode where they beat God and we had this dialogue. With Chuck not writing our story anymore, we get to write our own. You know, just you and me going wherever the story takes us. Finally free. So Dean says, It's okay. It's good. It's good. We had one hell of a ride, man. Um, Dean, don't you remember what you've been saying this entire fucking season? That you wanted your life? You wanted to be free, not to be God's chess piece, you wanted your fucking free will. And hey man, like you said, now that Chuck's gone, we're finally on our own. We are finally free to move on, you know? That's just one example, but the entire show has been about free will. They fucking call themselves Team Free Will. It's pretty clear that's an underlying message from the show, but now Dean just says he's meant to die? That that's how it's supposed to be? Fuck that, that's out of character, that's stupid. He's supposed to be pissed. To say, this is how I die? After all we've been through? He's not supposed to accept he's dying, not like that. <sighs> So then Sam says he'll find a way to bring Dean back, which he always does, and Dean tells him not to do it because it always ends badly. Now, that makes sense. Every time Sam and Dean died, they told each other not to try to save each other. That makes sense. However, the show wants us to think that Dean saying this justifies Sam not trying to save him, as we'll see later in the episode, but that doesn't work as a justification for Sam not to try to get Dean back. The only time Sam didn't try to save Dean, you know what Dean said? Did you look for me, Sam? Good. That's good. No, we... we... Always told each other not to look for each other. Of course, we always ignored that because of our deep, abiding love for each other, but not this time, right, Sammy? That was season 8, episode 1. The show back then knew that these two brothers would always look for each other, no matter if they knew it would cause issues or not. So Sam not doing it then was a big deal, and some could even argue out of character for him. But now in season 15, we're supposed to believe that Sam, for his entire life, didn't try to bring Ding back? Fuck that, that's not the Sam I've been watching for the past 15 years, especially when Sam says this when Dean is dying. Don't leave me. I can't do this alone. Then Dean tells Sam he's proud of him, that he looks up to him and everything. That is in character for Dean, and it's paired with great acting from Jensen and Jared. And it's a good thing to see in this final episode through these two brothers, but after so much bullshit, and more bullshit coming after this, this feels cheap as fuck. 
and it makes me furious because the finale for this show should be really emotionally impactful for me. I'm a huge fan of Supernatural, no matter the tisms, but this destroys what good there was in it. I fucking hate this. But yeah, Dean's words to Sam in his final moments are fucking great. His little speech to Sam. There's so much to talk about and why it's a good way to end Dean's character, but it's cheap and unearned after so much that has been retarded about this episode. But I do appreciate seeing the actual Dean Winchester I've known for years at least once more before he dies. Then Dean says, I want to be with you. Right here. Every day you're out there and you're, li you're living and you're fighting because you, you always keep fighting. You hear me? Well, Dean, hate to tell ya, but Sam doesn't keep fighting. He's gonna give up hunting, like, one day after you die? Which further fucks with what Dean said earlier in the episode. You know what, that pain's not gonna go away. But if we don't keep living, then all that sacrifice is gonna be for nothing. So Dean says, Well, I did not think this would be the day, but it is. It is, and that's, that's okay. That was a promising start, then Dean decided to say it's okay, despite that being completely out of character for him. However, Dean says to Sam, I need you to, to tell me that it's okay. I need you to tell me that it's okay. And that's a good line to show that Dean doesn't want to fully accept it, which makes sense. But we still have the issue of Dean saying it's okay that he's dying now, and he hasn't brought up any of the reasons that we know his character would have to be pissed, and to say it's not okay for him to die yet. We don't see their internal struggle at all outside of these couple lines, asking for Sam to say it's okay. But we know there's so much more of Dean's character that's just being ignored here. So then Sam says it's okay and that he can go, which is fair enough for him to do, to want his brother to be at peace and to rest, just reassuring him, so I don't have an issue with that. And then Dean says goodbye and dies, and Sam stays there crying and hugging Dean. Sam gives Dean a hunter's funeral, burning his body, which I wish I could say was an emotional scene, but I'm fucking furious at this point. Then we see Sam's alarm going off, and Sam turning it off slowly to show he's sad and to contrast with the opening scene of the episode. Now, if you're watching this episode for the first time, you may be asking, so what's gonna happen now? Because Dean is dead, Sam is gonna grieve for a while, but he should try to save Dean and go back to hunting. Again, this episode is really pointless and very poorly paced too. We're 26 minutes into a 42 minute long episode, and we have no clue what the plot is. The montage of Sam being sad around the bunker is kind of comical in a way, with the song choice and what they use to showcase it, but I'll let it slide because it just may be cynical old me not being sold on this bullshit death. So with this montage, one thing I'll say is that Jared is acting really well, especially when he's in Dean's room with the dog. But at 28 minutes and 20 seconds, we finally get something to move the plot forward. Like I said, pacing in this episode is atrocious. We have 14 minutes left of the episode and we have no idea where it's gonna go, nothing resembling plot in any fashion, and we'll see that the episode is gonna start, around this point in the episode anyway, to tell two separate stories. So the pacing is gonna be hurt by it, but the writing is as well, because they'll try to account for something narratively that doesn't make sense, but we'll get to that. So then Sam answers one of Dean's old phones, he gets emotional over it and everything, then decides to go help the dude that called him. Yeah, that makes sense, I'm okay with that. Huh, Sam's leaving the bunker very ceremoniously. That's weird. Wait, he turned the lights off, what the fuck? Yep. Sam just straight up leaves the bunker, leaves no indication that he left it to another hunter either. So he just leaves all that knowledge and artifacts there so nobody can find them. Awesome. And that means that after the job he's gonna do for Donna's friend, he's done being a hunter, which I've already talked about, but it's baffling to me. He just stops being a hunter, even after scenes like this have been shown. Then my family needed me, and this is my life. No matter how many times I try to fight it, this is what I was put here to do. This is where I make the world a better place. Or this. How about this? Don't leave. If we help people, then maybe they'll help people and all that. And that's worth it. Even with all the tears and death, it's worth it. These scenes are from recent seasons, by the way. Not too many years ago, very recently. But whatever, they already character assassinated Dean, why not Sam as well? <sighs> then we see Dean's body burning again. Then we transition to heaven, where we see Dean. Dean says, well, At least I made it to heaven. And we hear Bobby saying, Yep. Is seeing Bobby here cool? 100%. Does it make sense? Well, Bobby's gonna explain and we'll see that it doesn't, but I'll get to that. So, how heaven works in Supernatural is that, when people die, they go to heaven and see their best memories and relive them over and over again. Which is why Dean asks, What memory is this? Also because Bobby was in heaven's lockup, last Dean heard. To which Bobby says, It isn't a memory. Then he says, That kid of yours, before he went wherever, made some changes here busted my ass out. Okay, let's think about this for a second. If you've seen the previous episode, Jack said something when he became God that is very important here. 
I won't be hands-on. Jack specifically said he won't be hands-on, but he goes ahead and just saves Bobby. Sure, that could be Jack setting everything straight, putting everything how it should be. However, what Bobby says next is gonna fuck that up royally. He set some things right, tore down all the walls up here. Heaven ain't just reliving your golden oldies anymore. It's what it always should have been. Everyone happy, everyone together. Holy mother of God, this is fucking retarded. Okay, first off, why did Jack do that? He said he wasn't gonna be hands-on, yet he goes and changes how heaven works. That is being hands-on, you moron! Now, Bobby saying it's how it always should have been is also fucking retarded for two fucking reasons. Firstly, because if this is just people die, then they go to heaven, and heaven works exactly like earth, then what's the point of heaven? Or the point of earth, even? Because nothing changes, they'll see their friends, yeah, whatever, but they can still get upset, get in fights, get depressed. That's fucking stupid. But the other reason, which is a character assassination for Bobby and for Dean, once Dean accepts this, and also for Jack and Cass, since Cass helped Jack build this new heaven, and Jack and Cass were part of Team Free Will, but Bobby says that heaven is how it should be. Everyone happy? Bobby, this implies that everyone's mind is being controlled to make them happy. This is not free will, this is controlling people's souls after they die, making them feel happy. Now, you may think that feeling happy isn't a big deal, being forced to do it anyway, but it fucking is. It's about choice and free will, they have no free will or freedom of thought to not feel happy. This is fucking awful, I would've fucking died. <sighs> Then Bobby says Rufus lives 5 miles away, Dean's parents live somewhere close, then says that it's not just heaven, but the heaven Dean deserves. <sighs> Show, please stop assassinating Bobby, please, for the love of God. So Dean asks if Jack did all that, which Bobby says. Well, Cass helped. Um, what the actual fuck? Cass is dead, he's in the empty. Unless he was brought back to life by Jack. But if he was, that means Jack is being hands-on. Which then contradicts what he said in the previous episode, which is a big fucking deal because that's character assassinating Jack. Why is this episode so awful? You know what makes me so upset? The fact that they just say it in a throwaway line, despite the fact that it's a big fucking deal. They never bring it up again either. I fucking hate this. <laughs> then Dean says that it's almost perfect, implying that he misses Sam. This wouldn't be a problem if it was the memory system, by the way, so whatever, I guess. So Bobby says Sam will be along and that time in heaven works differently. Considering time in hell works differently as well, sure, that's fair enough, but we'll see a huge issue that's gonna come from that soon. Bobby says Dean has everything he could ever dream of and asks what he wants to do. So Dean looks at the Impala and says he'll go for a drive. I really want to like this moment, but fuck off, show. So much stuff has been so awful surrounding this, I feel so detached from this moment. Which fucking sucks as a long time fan of this show. This final episode fucking angers me. I also find it weird that we don't see Joe or Ellen, despite Bobby and Dean being at the roadhouse, but not really a big issue, more a missed opportunity. So Dean turns on the Impala, then Carry On Wayward Son starts playing, and Dean says, <sighs> I love this song. Do you have any idea how great this moment could have been? Dean turning on the Impala, driving away, carry on wayward some playing, him saying Love that, then the show ends. If that's how the last scene of episode 19 had gone, it would have been the perfect way to end the show, but how they did it in this, I'm just mad. Yeah, this kinda works, but everything else has been so shit, so I don't care about this moment. Yes, I'm being overly harsh with this episode, because it isn't necessary, it shouldn't exist. The previous episode caps off the show perfectly, so everything done in this episode is worthless and awful, I hate it. Then we see Sam with a kid, named Dean. Well, that's neat that his kid is named after Dean, but this just shows us, oh, Sam actually did quit being a hunter, which I've already talked about how fucking stupid that is. Ah, <sighs> for fuck's sake, dude. I also find it funny that we see Sam's wife, but they never show her face. Would it be too hard to get Eileen's actress to show up? We see Sam growing old, hanging out with his son, we see some photos in his house of the Winchester family. I hate that he gave up hunting, I hate he never tried to save Dean, but this could have been a really nice payoff if they had built up to it more. Instead, the only way to have done this right would be to not have done it at all, but whatever. Then we see old Sam, with the worst old person makeup I've ever seen. He sits in the Impala, I guess reminiscing about his brother. I'm not sure. When the song ends, we see old Sam dying and we see his son on his deathbed with the tattoo to protect him from demon possessions. Cool detail, but it only makes me think more of the fact that Sam gave up hunting. The fact that Sam's son tells him the same words that he told Dean when Dean died is a cool detail, I actually like that. The thing I don't like is that they start playing a different version of Carry On Wayward Son. You just played that song. Now playing a cover, I imagine the version they sang in the 200th episode. Uh, why? This feels incredibly cheap. Yeah, they know we like this song, they know this song means a lot to the Supernatural fans, but you don't have to emotionally manipulate us like that, the writing should stand on its own. <sighs> so Sam dies, then we see Dean arriving at a bridge and, as the song ends, Dean smiles and says, Hey Sammy. I wish I could have said that line was emotionally impactful to me, but it just angers me. 
Well, weird that we're gonna have old Sam here in heaven, huh? Anyway, seeing old Sam with all the experience from living the life he always wanted in his eyes, seeing his brother who died decades ago would be an interesting thing to see. So Dean turns back and what the fuck show? That's young Sam, why is he young? Fuck off you retard, stop breaking your rules for shit like this. This episode only cares about these retarded fucking payoffs, doesn't care how it gets to them. It's stupid, I hate it, this episode shouldn't exist at all. So Sam and Dean hug, then they look ahead smiling. Ah yes, the two heroes died. They had no chance to live the life they wanted with free will after defeating God himself. I too am extraordinarily happy. <laughs> Then the show ends. The show has a lot of free shoes. I don't even know if I'd call it good outside of like the first five seasons, but I fucking adore it. Yet they managed to ruin it in this final episode. I still love the show, and I've been rewatching it with my mom, and I'm 100% telling her that the finale episode was episode 19 when we get to it. I don't want this episode to exist. It's worthless, pointless, insulting, poorly written, poorly paced. I hate it. When 2020 started, I had planned to make a video thanking everyone involved with the show and talking about aspects I loved about it. And while I admire people involved in making the show and I'm always grateful for them, I can't help but leave with a sour taste in my mouth. I can't help but make this video and talk about how insulting it is to me what they did to one of my favorite shows. They managed to assassinate Jack off screen as well as Cass, they also assassinated Bobby as well as Sam and Dean. They fucked with the rules of how heaven works, the episode had basically no plot, production design is pretty fucky like with Sam's old man makeup. Only thing that was genuinely good was the acting, the rest only makes me want to kill myself. Fuck this episode and everything it did. Every time I rewatch the show I forget this episode exists and I'll have nothing. 19 is the finale. It even feels like the finale anyway. I won't be missing out on much. Well, we're on the road. We're driving our 67 yeah. Impala with the weapons loaded in the trunk and we're, we're hunting.